Are these DaVinci Resolve AI features really saving us time? My dorky daddies, how y'all doing? So last week I released a new podcast episode with Dylan Bates after kind of being MIA on the show for quite a while. And the main reason I have been MIA on the show is, well, because it just takes so much effort and energy to make, and it's not the conversations, that's my favorite part. It's the editing, the editing of the show. And if we're being so honest right now, time is not something I have a lot of. So naturally you guys are asking the right question, which is why did I make another episode? Well, to get you amazing dorks caught up, DaVinci Resolve 20 came out not that long ago, and holy crap, it had this amazing new feature called Auto Pod Switcher or Auto Pod Cutter. I should know the name, but I don't remember it off the top of my head. And this feature is crazy. If you pass it in a multicam clip, like I have with all of my podcasts, it is able to cut the angles based on looking at faces and audio, who is talking, and it puts the angle cut on that person. It's so damn cool. And of course, with this new feature, I wanted to make another episode and test if this truly could save me a ton of time in my workflow. And honestly, after doing it, while it was super cool and there's some things we're going to talk about today, I am not convinced that it actually really saved me that much time. That is what we're talking about today. Dorky Daddy. So today's video is going to be broken down into two main parts. Number one, does this new feature objectively save time? Like, is there an objective amount of time that is being saved? And number two, from a more complicated quality and principle standpoint from someone who's been editing for many, many years, does it actually save time? So let's dive into it. And so of course, let's first talk about that Number one, that first question, does this objectively speed up time? And well, after my testing and after using it and seeing what Blackmagic has done with this, yes, it does objectively save time. If you are someone who edits a podcast show or a like a after live stream show with multiple cameras and a multicam, this feature could save you tons of time in just the sheer number of clicks to change angles. And especially for a more live event where you kind of want the whole thing and just switching angles, this is perfect, you can trust it. I think it works awesome and for that, this does save a ton of time. So question one, yes, it does objectively save time. But now, of course, this brings us to question number two. What I found while editing this episode is I wanted to do what I would call a check to see if the edit was air Tight. What if as an editor or a creator, you are truly the type of person that wants to make sure every frame of what you make is perfect and done exactly how you want it? And if that is the case, you need to watch through the entire episode even after this has been done. So I think you guys can kind of see where I'm going with this. Yes, it does save you time because now you're not having to click the buttons to make the cuts. And most of the time it's going to be perfectly good or right or okay, but there's probably gonna be a few instances where you wanna make some tweaks and you have to watch the whole thing to see if you need to do that. So again, it did save you some time, but you're starting to kind of get into a more marginal territory here because you have to watch the whole episode no matter what. But here's the other thing, there's one other piece to this equation, and especially for someone like me who does internet, you know, video call interviews, podcasts, there's always a little bit of delay in the conversation. I ask a question and the guest has to hear it, delay, you know, call, video, time call, delay, and then respond. And while this is annoying, it's just kind of a necessary evil of being able to talk to all the people that I want to talk to. I can't fly them out to the shed every time, although that would be cool to have a real life natural feeling conversation. And so typically on these episodes, I prefer to go through, cut the angles and try to tighten up those awkward pause dead spaces. Now, don't get me wrong. I know we're used to the internet and all of these things. And like, obviously, of course, people are probably completely fine with these little gaps when they're listening to this, but I don't know, I just don't like them. And so for this particular thing, yes, again, of course, you are saving time because you're not having to make the cuts and you're just tightening things up, doing your J cuts. But ultimately, 
You're still having to do all of that through the whole episode, and did this really save you time? It's a lot more marginal than it certainly seemed like it was going to be on paper when this feature was released. So my dorky daddies, in conclusion, I think the takeaway from this whole experiment is that if you are someone who likes to take your podcasts from that 90% quality to 100% airtight, natural feeling quality, especially for interview podcasts, this feature does save you time but it is a lot more marginal than you would probably hope. And to be honest with you, Dylan's episode last week, I did not do that. I did not do the tightening up. I just let Da Vinci cut it. I left in the gaps. I left the internet delay. And if comment down below if you felt like you didn't notice that or you didn't care. I would be curious to know because I personally am not a big fan of it. But I don't know. Maybe it doesn't matter. And maybe we could have this show weekly if I could just use and trust black magic to cut the episode. But anyway, that's all for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Hit that subscribe button. Consider becoming a dorky daddy if you're the biggest editing nerd in your town, which I'm sure you are. And uh, with that, I'm going to get back to editing. Don't forget, as always, most importantly, as I hit my tripod to stay dorky.